So Tobias, what do you think of the, uh, the state of the affairs of the globe right now? <laughs> well, I mean, I think we're in um, a lot of political crisis, social crisis. I mean, yeah. um, I can't really speak globally, but I can only speak from my experiences as uh, living in, in the U.S., you know, the United yeah. States. And so, um, although there are reports of saying economically that we are doing much better, um, but as we know, the environment uh, is suffering tremendously. Right. And we, um, you know, we exceed the charts for just about every social ill you can think of, you know, from every incarceration, health, um, and so forth. And so, uh, and, and which contributes to the work that I do. So when I hear about these, um, these social ills, especially how it affects me directly living in an in, in urban environment such as Newark, New Jersey, uh, it just puts me into action to want to make some significant changes uh, in my community at least. And you are. And that's how we met, right? Oh, that is how Was we that met. Is that Kill Candies in Newark? Well, I tell, I tell everybody, no, well, you know what, I tell everybody that you are responsible for me, um, for me pursuing this journey of an urban agriculturalist as an right. urban farmer, as um, someone who advocates for the uh, long-term sustainability of urban agriculture, if not agriculture in general. Right. Um, but yeah, so I want to thank you, seriously. Thank, yeah. well, seriously, thank you, because I mean it when I say, when, when we and I have, uh, you know, my doubts, and Shakespeare says, you know, your doubts are your traitors, I look to you. <laughs> and and you're, you're, I'm, I'm not joking, you're the wind in my sails, and you motivate me because you have almost two or three fully functioning, beautiful urban farms, and I call them farms, they're farms, right? Nice, you know, nice. <laughs> you know, we need to you know, make that separation, you know, and I think that one of the most formative moments in my life was, in a, in, in, was when I was in Newark with you, and we, we did plant those, you know, uh, almost 100 trees at the New Jersey Tree Yes, we did, yes, you know? we did. So, yeah, so you were the, um, uh, I mean, you, you, you really just set me on this path, really, because, um, yeah, the first, Hundred trees that I planted was with you. Yeah, you know, I was organizing with you, and then um, kind of think of it. Every time a tree planting event occurred that I take part in, it was because you you, you initiated that. You know, and, and and it's 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 a beautiful thing because I honestly one of the most meaningful things I've ever done with my life planting trees. Oh, nice. You know, and and it's beautiful because it's concrete change. Right. You plant that tree. You see the beauty, and you know it's going to be filtering out that air, creating climate, and giving people hope and faith that there is a there is a better future. And it has a possibility of lasting for generations. Right, know? generations. Yeah. What was the Thomas Jefferson quote? You know, the, the real meaning of positive change, I'm paraphrasing, of course, is to plant the tree from which you will never benefit uh, from the fruit or shade from. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think about, you know, who I am, what I'm supposed to do in the world, and I, I think we're at this beautiful time where technology is so ubiquitous, everybody's so connected, and we're so disconnected from nature. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're products of our education, so yeah. we've been conditioned to um, see the world in this compartmentalized view, and so we have no connections with one another, just like we have no connections with math and English and English with science and so right. forth. And it's we're products of our education, and so we've been the products. We're the products of this industrialized education model that is proven to be no longer relevant. So we need uh, something different. And I think this is it. What we're doing here, what, and, and what so many people are doing, you see it around the globe, you, see, you truly do see the green revolution. You see people coming together to say, hey, we need clean water, right? right? The, the, the wonderful youth of America, the, the group of uh, kids that are suing the United States government because they did not and are not leaving clean air, clean land, and clean water for their, for their uh, lives. You, right. see it, you see it you know, in places as far as India and China and back. You know, and we live in like this weird world that's so beautiful and it has so much love and hate. But, but, you know, there's a quote actually from DiCaprio, one of our one of the green leaders out there, right? And it was from Blood Diamond, mm. and he was he was chatting with the gal at the bar, and uh, she said, "Oh, you know, the world's the world's gone to a mess, so the world's gone to shit, right?" Right. And he turns to her and says, "Yeah, but when hasn't it? <laughs> you know, in the Revolutionary War, what people weren't thinking that too, right? Like, so I think it's this perhaps one of the most meaningful things that we can do is inspire through action, you know." The world's always going to be rough. It's always going to be beautiful. It's always going to have the destruction and the, and, the, and the growth, the yin and the yang. Right, right, right. right. It's, uh... I mean, I mean, when you think about the most significant 
social changes in our in our in in the history of, of this country, uh, if not the world, has always occurred from some form of grassroots movement or some individual who decided enough is enough and inspired others to want to get up and make the world a much easier and better place to live in. Right. And so I think, you know, as as it's been proven from, you know, years prior, you know, to me, is that whenever you want some significant social changes to occur, you have to do it from the ground up. It has to be kind of like this grassroots mobilization pushing for change in order for it to significantly come. And it starts with yourself. No, absolutely. And, and you know what I think. You know what I think is so beautiful about this moment. You know, uh, you know, through crisis, leaders are born. Through opportunity, you know, uh, justice can truly become even more widespread. Right. Like, like King beautifully. You know, I mean, I'm not joking. I had such an interesting interaction with LA this past year, and I came here, and I would listen to Martin Luther King on this river, Rampart River in Mahoney, New Jersey. Martin Luther King speeches over and over and over again to center myself in in what I'm supposed to be doing, and he has that one. Uh, one beautiful speech at the end, he says, I, not might, I may not make it there with you, right. but I can see the mountaintop. <laughs> and what people forget in that speech, and I think this is so relevant now more than ever, mm -hmm. he started that speech and he said, if um, he, he was doing a book signing in New York, and some woman, and he said a demented black woman, stabbed him in the chest. Mm. And he, he felt the stab, and he said the next morning in the New York Times, after they rushed into the hospital, they said, the doctor said, if you had nearly sneezed, you would have no longer been here. Wow. And then he went on in that, and in, in a beautiful, repetitive, rhetorical way, he said, and I'm so glad I didn't sneeze because I was able to do the Freedom March. I'm so glad I didn't sneeze because I was able to do the I Have a Dream speech. Right. And at the end of that, he juxtaposes the, the, the hate that can exist in anybody, in any body, black, white, you know, male, Puerto Rican, female, transgender, whatever, right? right. And, he, and he juxtaposed that by, he said, a girl from White Plains High School, a white girl, said, I shouldn't have to say this to you, dear Dr. King. After he got stabbed, he said he didn't remember any letters, not even from the president, who wrote him letters, and the governor, right. but he remembered this letter from this young gal. And she said, Dr. King, I didn't think I have to tell you this, but I want to let you know I'm a white girl, and I'm so glad you didn't sneeze. <laughs> and I think now more than ever, we need to talk about how we are one and stop dividing us according. Acknowledge differences, acknowledge the inequalities right. and the benefits and all, right. all the facts. But now, more than ever, we need to talk about how we are all one and we can all get back there. Right. I'm so glad he didn't sneeze. Yeah, well, we're, we're still living in this tribal mindset, you right. know, where we have to look out for our own kinship, so to speak, you know? Right. And, and, and you're my kid. You're one, of, you're one of the best friends I have in the whole world. Mm, thanks. You know? thanks. And, and I think that, that when that happens, when people get to know each other, that's what Seal said when we met him on the hike in Malibu. He said, you know, I don't know you from Adam, but now I do. Right. So we just need to, I think we need to talk. Yeah, we definitely need to communicate more with each other. Communi and, and, and technology has helped made the world that much more smaller uh, with social media and, and internet. Um, and I it's, mean, also, it's also made it easier for hate to flourish. Well, it, it's, it definitely has its negative and positives, that's for sure. Right. And so I tend to, you know, be a little more optimistic. Um, I mean, I just can't, I love being able to communicate with my cousin who lives in China, right. you know? <laughs> yeah, at that point it's made, it's made love more uh, uh, contagious too. Yeah. So we're hyper-connected for, for the good and the bad. Yeah, that's true. That's it's true. like money. It's not necessarily good or bad. It's what you do with it. And, but, and at least the, the, the negative energy is exposed as well. Yeah. It's, oh, right. So now we're seeing it. Yeah. Before we didn't see it, it was hidden. It was hidden. It, it was it was discrimination and racism and just hate right. uh, 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 that was hidden behind closed doors. Right, right, right. right. It's right. the uh, yeah, interesting. The veil has been lifted. Absolutely. And we've been connected worldwide. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm glad to know you, Tobias. <laughs> I'm glad to know you too, my brother. Uh, this is good. I'm, I'm, this is I've, so I've never done this before. This is my first time. I am truly from the concrete jungle, as they would say, you know, um, Newark, New Jersey, right. and East Orange, where I grew up, and so I, I've, I've, I've come to appreciate nature and all that it offers, um, with this good and bad parts of it, you know, right, right. Um, but, um, but be, to be connected with it, it kind of, uh, it really helps, man. It helps because we are organic beings. Right. And so to be disconnected from nature is to be, I feel, is to be disconnected from yourself, you know? 
I, I agree to that point. You know, living in Los Angeles for a year and change, and coming back to you know my home river we're on now, I, I feel this this almost like when I'm in nature uh, in a really real, real way, it energizes me. You know, not just because of the, the concrete facts that there's more oxygen, right? Uh, and during the springtime when the, when the leaves are photosynthesizing or for the fact that it's relaxing and it's calm, but for the fact that it's just, it, you're right, it's connected to directly who we are. Yeah. You know, and I think that doesn't everybody deserve to grow up and have your own piece of land, your own fresh air? Absolutely. So I think that's what we're fighting for. And I, and I think we need to stop fighting against each other and start fighting with each other. We're, we're at this amazing point in, in America specifically, but in the world where we can tear each other apart or we can lift each other up. And, you know, all people lifting each other up from, from all different backgrounds. And uh, it's good to be back on the river. <laughs> By the way, this is really deep, this part. So if you do capsize, <laughs> I, will, I will save you all. And I will, I'll, I'll pay you back for the, the, full, the full cost of the camera. But I know that won't happen. Because we have such an amazing camera gal. I love my life. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, 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 I love what you're doing in New York. I, I love what people are doing around the world. I mean, one of, you know, one of the things that I think often about is I, I believe in the inevitability. It's inevitable that our species will thrive with nature. Right. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying lives will, will continue to be lost in big super storms and, you know, the, the current, you know, global power structure, which many people argue is a kleptocracy powered by oil, is more powerful than governments. And you see it in the influence of elections. But I think that we, that we don't need hope. We, we just have to look at the facts and have faith. Like Jim Carrey says that, of course, it's inevitable that we'll do this. The question is, who's going to do it? Right. And I'm, I'm glad to be on literally this boat. You know, I'm the captain of my faith, the master of my soul, and, and I know you are too, and I'm glad to be on this boat together with you. Oh, well, thanks, man. So, my, my, it's, it, it's never, it's, it was never like a large group of people that are responsible for making some, you know, making significant changes in our society. Right. Never a large group. There's always a handful of people that is responsible for that. And so, just think about when we go into our homes and we hit the light switch to turn on the lights. It was actually a small group of technicians that made that possible for millions of people to benefit from, you know? And so uh, when we think about change, we can't think that, you know, it's going to happen with this, you know, millions of people demanding it. Um, it's going to most likely jumpstart from a handful of innovators saying, like, enough is enough. Right. We need to do something different because we can. We have the technological capabilities. We have the education to do it. And so there's nothing else holding us back other than this socioeconomic structure that we've been, been locked in for so long. Right. And even that it seems to be um, tearing itself apart. And through those tears, just like when you, when you build muscle, you tear. Right. And then, then through those tears, growth can occur. You know, and, and I, I agree with you. I, I, two things remind me, uh, come to my mind as you, as you say this, Tobias. Eleanor Roosevelt, the quote that, you know, never doubt that a small group of people can change the world. Often it's, often in, uh, it, it's the only group of people who ever have. And Tupac, I don't, you know, he said something along the lines of, I'm not saying I'm going to change the world, but I'm going to spark right. the mind that changes the world. And if we all have that attitude that this is nobody's mission, this is not one person saving the world. As a matter of fact, right. that's a false narrative. It's never one person. Right. It's a group of motivated people, a team, a family, you know? Right. And, and I think when we look at America as a family, you know, uh, God bless Cory Booker, Gavin Newsom, Eric Garcetti, these, these bright lights that, that illuminate this dark time. Um, I, I think about family and I think about, I mean... Hell, I'm going to start having a family soon. So, so how can I help the social system? How can I take action? And, and you know, I, I want my daughter and I want your son to have the same opportunities. And I, and I want, you know, our daughter, you know, you know, our daughter and, and your son to also have the same opportunities that people all around the world have. Right. And I think that people are so easily fear mongered that we then go back to the brainstem. We go back to the, oh my gosh, people are taking my money. People are right. taking my jobs. Right. No, 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 maybe some of that is true, but for the most part, it's pretty amazing, this country and this world. Yeah. And if we work together, instead of fighting against, if we collaborate, we're a super organism, aren't we? Right. I feel like that more than ever. I'm not me, I'm not more than me. I'm you plus me plus all the other people. That's true, that's true. And I feel well, like technology can disconnect us from that. Well, it definitely needs to be a massive re-education process that needs to occur um, to kind of uh, 
changed the minds, you know, of a lot of people. Right. And because we are, again, you know, we've been in, uh, infected and affected um, by these social ills that has been uh, deeply rooted in the fabric of our social system, you know? And so, and it's going to take a lot of work to do that, you know, but for me, I think globally, um, but I act local. Um, I don't know how to solve world hunger on my own, but I do know how to create a uh, urban farm or a community garden in my neighborhood. So that way residents in that particular community can have access to locally fresh grown produce. I do know how to uh, work with technicians to create a community solar farm so yeah. residents uh, can actually experience what free, you know, energy looks like and feels like. You know? But um, but to your point, I think um, for me, I use I use uh, technology specifically um, social media and the internet to kind of give a vi visual uh, demonstration illustration of the work that I'm doing, the possibilities that can happen if we work in collaboration. Because uh, I see the collabor uh, collaboration is the growth of stuff. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what I can't help but think about daily. What's that? The hate and discrimination against all sides, and I think you can't talk about the success of America without talking about what many would not want to hear is to many people modern day slavery, the prison industrial system. Not that all people that are in there are, are innocent, but some are in, you know some, some are guilty. But as old Al Capone, you know the the, the Italian uh, organized crime member that we lionize, we celebrate in our culture, said in his interview, "Why do you do it? Out of necessity." Yeah. So like, so, yeah, yeah. First of all. Embedded in the fabric of our system is racism, classism, sexism, and all these other isms. Right. And the prison industrial complex is another um, system um, that is created, one, to, to is generate revenue, and uh, two, it, it just, um, <laughs> it is modern day slavery, you know? It is. I mean, it's modern day slavery, and we are so stuck on this this system of punishment and not um, educating people like I mean I just I, I really don't understand how sending a person to prison uh, for the rest of their life um, how that creates social change how it doesn't prove anything okay it creates like you said it creates economic growth you know and and you know there's 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 jerks and knuckleheads in any population right there's some there's some people that are sick and need to be you know taken uh, taken away so to speak but, but the vast majority of people and the vast majority of any background uh, I believe most people can agree are good-hearted people when given the opportunity to be you know what I mean so let's not be afraid of those that look different than us and let's also not be afraid to love our own people I, I'll be honest with you after being from New Jersey and going to LA I feel like what's happening now is there's this hatred there's this bubbling up hatred because there continues to be not change there continues to be um, protracted struggle there continues to be this massive inequality right. and I think I hear it in the, in the media and, and, I, and I, I'll be honest like I don't like hearing white used and weaponized right. you know and, and, and you know so I think like wouldn't, well wouldn't you one of my best friends say well yeah I don't like seeing people look like they get shot in the street <laughs> and so, so why are you complaining about white being weaponized? Well, but I think that what we need I don't want to see any. I don't want to see human being getting shot in the right? street. Yeah. I don't want to see anybody getting shot. So, so I think about, I think about how we need to listen to the, the love and the wisdom of Nelson Mandela when he got out of prison off of Robben Island, right? Prison for at least twenty years. Yeah. All of his his counterparts, his African, you know, uh, uh, you know, colleagues and, and constituents, said, "Hey, we need to go against the white Springboks." Right. And he said, "No, because if we hate them." We're going to be just as bad as they are, yeah. and I see that inclination. That that um, you know what? Let, 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 let's rip let's rip the white society apart, and, and and let's let's hate on them because they've hated on us. And I think, oh my God, I could understand how that must be something that you, you people might think. And and I understand they want this shift to have this the shift away from just white privilege. When I believe you need all privilege, and I believe what's happening is unfortunately that people who look like me. Are being pushed away from a more diverse area because they don't feel like they have a place and i think we should start talking about wealth privilege around the world there are people from all ethnicities that are super wealthy and they're the ones oh, pulling yeah. the string and often trying to divide us by classic old race baiting like obama said it's been used since the beginning of time yeah so a couple of things one um <laughs> our legal system is a poor excuse of solving problems 
Um, another thing is that if 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 we no longer needed money to survive, 95% of crime would just stop like that. Most crimes are generated from the need of something. Right. Um, and so Nelson Mandela reached that point in his life, not through his education he received, but because of self-awareness, self-realization. And he understood that um, when we're at our most, when we're most divided, it's when we seek out the highest level of, of chaos. And so to bring some type of, I think what he did was create, he demonstrated social justice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, let's, let's not, you know, focus on t what divides us. Let's focus on what brings us together. And right. he was able to show that, you know. And hence we're back to the environment. The water right here in the Rampo River is polluted. Just as this river directly connects to the Passaic River and directly connects to the Hudson River, and, and those are the rivers that run through where I grew up and where you grew up. We're directly connected through rivers, through water. Yeah, someone else brought that to my attention. But we don't, we have to, so it's, it's, it's up to you and I and others who, who understand this connectedness that we have right. um, to be able to educate those who don't see this. And then we have to find ways to reach those who, who don't understand this, you know? Um, yeah, and, and never stop, right. and never stop. And, and, never and know stop. that setbacks are just another lesson to be learned because, man oh man, I don't know about you, but sometimes it feels bleak. It feels desperate. <laughs> it feels like, what? What just happened? How am I supposed to reach my students? How am I supposed to reach my family members, you know? Right. And, right. and uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy because what you're doing is asking people to um, go against uh, their values, what has been instilled in them. Um, through their, you know, teachings from home, their faith, their, you know, schools, and you're asking them to kind of open up their minds to see a, another possibility. Right. And it's not easy for everybody to do that. You know what I think about a lot? One of the best vectors for education is humor. You look at all the all the great shows out there, whether it's Bill Maher or John Oliver or Richard Pryor, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle, his stand-up uh, comedian uh, bit, and, and he talked about, um, was it Emmett Till, the open coffin? Right. And he did it through humor. He disarmed right. you, and then he educates you. And I think, yeah. well, if I'm going to be successful, i gotta, I got to get funnier. <laughs> you know, well, I have these, to start cracking more jokes. These people are social philosophers. They're social philosophers. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm just glad to know you. It's... it's one day we'll all be dirt, and uh, why not? Oh, that's true. That's true. You know, the, the motivation I draw from often, you know, the Invictus poem I, I spoke to you about by, by Henley that goes, no matter, you know, my head is bloodied but unbowed. Right. My head is bloodied but unbowed. No matter how straight the gate or how punished the scroll, I'm the master of a fate. Mm. I'm the master of my soul. Right. And I think that kind of determination, that kind of realization that there are factors out there that it can influence you. But right. hence, back to the urban farm that you and I have been, you know, the many that we started collectively and individually in Newark. Right. We showed those students, that can, you continue to show the youth, that they can have just as much of an impact on their environment as it has on them. Oh, absolutely. It's a two-way street. It is. It is. But, you know, and there's a whole list of challenges with that in itself, you know? You know, because who wants to, who wants to do that work? Yeah, no, and, and, and right, so you, you want to go home, you want to raise your family, you want to be able to watch football without, without thinking about social justice, right. and you know what, well other people want to be able to go to work without having to think about social justice. I think I think what's weird and what's sort of beautiful is I often think about race and identity when I never did, right. and I think a lot of people are having to do this work when they didn't have to before, right. and so that's different, that's change, but I think that, I just have faith that the beauty will, the beauty will win. And, and the bonding will continue to occur. And we, we, the more and more we just know that we're all one, the more and more we're, gonna, we're going to succeed as a group. Right. This river is this river's strong right here. <laughs> Should I help me paddle? Should I help? <laughs> this is where we need to.